So in the series of learning C++ programming language, we are discussing loops in C. In the previous video, we have uh, you know, discussed some basic about loops, like what is loop, why we need loop and uh, you know, uh, different categories like two categories, they are classified into two categories, entry control and exit control loop. In entry control, first condition would be checked. If the condition is true, then only you will enter into the loop body, right? And in exit control, at the time of exit, at the end of the loop body, first of all, control will enter into the loop body and then at the time of exit, condition would be checked. These things basically we have discussed in the previous video. You can check out that video in the side button. Now, I know how many types of loop? Basically, four while and do while. One more loop is there in C++ that is range based for loop. So, four type of uh, loops we will discuss here. So, in this video, we will talk about four loop, right? What is the general syntax of this loop? The working basically, it is very important to understand the working of the loops, working of loops, each loop, for while, do while, right? Not, it's not like that you just, you know, that ratification type of thing, just uh, uh, remember the syntax of for loop and yeah, yeah, this is the thing. No, you have to understand behind the scene what is the process going on, the functioning, you know, the working of the loop. So that exactly we will discuss in this video right about four loops with the help of proper examples and programs right now first of all okay you know why we use loop like for repetitive statement if you have iterations in your program repetitive statements are there then we use loop means you want to execute you want to execute a statement or set of statements multiple times then we use loops right now see general syntax of this four loop is what simply we write four and I have told you in previous video, three basic, you can say things are there in each loop. Initialization or you can say from where the loop will start, where the loop will end means termination condition and update, three basic things. So same, how these three things would be written, that is what about syntax, right? So how these things would be written in for loop, for here we write, uh, you can say like, expression 1 semicolon expression 2 semicolon expression 3 and here we have then loop body and that's it rather than these expression now what are these three expressions see what you can write or syntax you can write for first expression would be initialization so where we write initialization semicolon it is semicolon many students beginners do this mistake they uh, you know put here comma rather than semicolon but it is semicolon initialization then the condition termination condition again semicolon and then update these three things and here we have loop body that's it this is the general syntax of for loop now the working of for loop, let me just discuss this thing with the help of a program. This thing you need to take care, this is semicolon, right? These two are semicolon. So now, let's take one example, simple example, we will, uh, you know, uh, write down, we will print numbers from 1 to 10, like this. I want this kind of output, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this. One way is, Without using loop, what you can do? Simple see out 1, see out 2, see out 3, simply print. But that is not a good idea, right? Or if you take a variable, then simply you can take a variable like int i or any variable a, b, c, d, something like this, right? You can initialize it with 1, simply see out this i and then i plus plus. Means i plus plus means it becomes now 2. Then again see out i, then again i plus plus like this you can do this thing but same you have to write down these two lines again and again but that we don't want in your, in your program right obviously to reduce number of lines of code for these repetitive to you know reduce these repetitive statements to eliminate these repetitive statements we use loops so better to use loop now how to use loop in this case see first is initialization so from where loop will start obviously you have to tell from one so simply write four int i is equal to 1 this is initialization right or simply you can write i is equal to 1 but before using this variable 
we have to declare this variable first in the program. Right? I'm not writing complete program here. I'm just writing down the four uh, loop logic, right? Those header files, main and all. So before, after, in this main function, you have to declare int i. Then you can initialize here. This is also a case. But suppose in this also, I'm writing int i is equal to 1. Now, the termination condition would be what? After printing 10, it should terminate. So, i should be less than equal to 10. Till i is less than equal to 10, it will print the value, then it will stop. And then i plus plus. Simple. This is initialization, this is condition and this is update. Now, what you will write in this loop body? What is the program all about? You have to print these numbers. So, simply you can print C out i, whatever the value of i, you can simply print and handle this manipulator, right? That's it. So, now let's discuss the actual working of this for loop. First of all, whenever program would be executed, you run this program, control will go to the main function, right? Right, and then at some point of time, it will come to here. So now in this case, first is initialization. So in the memory, we have a variable i and the value of variable is 1. Okay, first step is this one. Second step is what? This. Now condition would be checked. Is i less than or equal to 10? Yes, 1 is less than or equal to 10, condition true. Now, third step is not this one. Now, if condition is true, control will enter into the loop body. Now, third is, third step is this one. Whatever the statements in this loop body that would be executed because condition is true. Now, see out i, we simply print i. So, on screen, one would be printed, right? And l means cursor would be next line now. Now, there is no more statement in this for loop. So, we will not exit from this for loop. What fourth statement is what? This update expression i plus plus would be done now. Control will go to this update expression. i plus plus, now i becomes 2. Again, now here, control will come here, condition would be checked. Condition is still true? Okay, enter into this whole loop again. i would be printed, 2 would be printed. Again, control will go here. i plus plus means it becomes now 3. Condition would be again checked. Still 3 less than equal to 10. Again true. Enter into this and 3 would be printed and this step would be, these process would be repeated. Now, these steps are in loop, right? I hope after this working, now one thing is clear to you. If I ask you one question, how many times in for loop transition statement would be executed? Sometimes they ask uh, this question in my mind. How many times in transition statement would be executed? This for loop. I hope you know the answer. Only once. Initialization is this one. This is not in loop. Right? This would be executed only once. Now, the condition, the statements and this, this would be in loop. Till condition is true. Now, at one point of time, 10 would be printed and i plus plus i becomes now 11. Now, condition would be same. 11 less than equal to 10? No. Condition is not true. So, control will not enter into this for loop. Exit from this for loop. Suppose after this for loop, I have written C out, out of for loop. So, this would be printed after 10, this would be printed out of for loop. Or whatever statement you will write, that would be executed. I hope now the basic working of for loop is clear to you all. Right? So, one assignment for you is what? You have to write down a program to print some of the Enter the numbers or the natural numbers you want to print or the some of the numbers you want to print. Suppose I am entering 5. So, what it will print? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. I guess 15. So, it should print 15. Not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No. Increment as well as some of these numbers. If I enter 10, then it should do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus like plus 10 up to 10 and the total sum it would print. So, a little bit tricky this thing. If this is clear to you, you have to do, you have to you know add some simple logic. You have to add these things rather than print 
add then sum you have to print after this for loop. I guess you can do this thing. Just try out think this logic. I know if you are a beginner it is not easy for you guys to think the logic but at least try out it happens with everyone. So at least try and if you have tried like multiple times and still you are not getting then you can take help from Google right. Okay now this is the thing and you just write down the logic in comment section so that I can see you like hi yeah you have done this thing okay and see now now the one you guys I hope now you can draw the flow chart if I ask you so let's pause the video and draw first of all and then come to this video now I am drawing the flow chart of this thing so first thing is what initialization okay then condition would be checked okay if condition is true then control will enter in this loop body after this loop body uh, loop body what will happen update that is i plus plus and then again condition will this is the thing if condition is false if at starting only condition is false, if the condition I put something like this, i less than equal to 0, so it is i is 1, 1 less than equal to 0, no, so we will not enter into this for loop, out of this for loop, so if condition is false, false simply out of this for loop, so this is simple flow chart of this working over this for loop, right. Now, this is simple syntax, basic syntax, but you can do multiple tricky things with this for loop. It is not compulsory to write down all the three things in this for loop. These are optional. Even you can write something like this for semicolon, semicolon. Yeah, these semicolon, two semicolon, these are compulsory. But you can, this is optional. Initialization, sorry, this uh, condition and update. You can write down this thing also. So, you will get some output in this case. You can omit this thing, you can write down these two things only, you can write down these two, two things only and you can omit this thing. These kind of things you can take it in for loop. And this type of questions being asked in interviews, sometimes in competitive exams, right. So this thing or you can say that this is what some properties of for loop, what you can do with this for loop, that thing all the things we will discuss in next video, right. I hope now basic thing about for loop is clear to you, the working and all. So one assignment for you is this, second assignment is what? I am writing in i is equal to, here I am writing in i is equal to 10, okay. And i less than equal to 10 and i plus plus. Now what output you will get? You have to tell in comment section from this thing, if you have got the idea, right. Second is what I am writing, second assignment for you is, you have to tell what would be the output of this thing. i 10, i equal to equal to 10, i plus plus and we are printing simply i, right. So these things you have to tell. I hope now this is clear to you guys. So let's create a new file for loop.cp2, right? Simply include IO stream, those header we will include, then namespace, std, right? Then in main, we'll write down our code. Okay, so now simply 4 int i is equal to 1, semicolon, sorry it is int, then condition, condition would be what, i less than equal to 10, right, then semicolon and i plus plus, okay, now we will print c out i and end it. I am not putting any curly braces here like 4 after 4 like this one. You can also put this line into this these curly braces return before return 0 right because we are writing only single statement so that would be automatically by default considered as part of for loop. If you are writing it like 2, 3 more, more, more than one statement then you have to put these all the statement into these uh, break, uh, braces, curly braces, right? Okay, now let's run this and see what output you will get. 
Okay, let's run this again. See, one, one to ten, it is printing, right? Now, see, I told you the semicolons are very important. If rather than semicolon, I put here comma, you will get an error message. See, you can see this uh, red line here, red underline, and expected a semicolon. Let me just run this and show you the error. Error, see expected semicolon before this token in five line number five line number five and the column is column number is 26 so here see before this they are expecting a semicolon so it is also very important you know you have to read the errors how to analyze the errors how to find out yeah this is the error in this line number in this column and this would be the error so it is also a you can say quality of a good programmer to analyze these errors and to find you know to find out yeah this is the error so here we have to put semicolon rather than this simple so this is simple for loop 1 to 10 it is going to print right now if i write here something like this i is equal to uh, 1 i is equal to 10 or i is equal to 10 again i is equal to 10 and i plus plus so see what output you will get here it would be an infinite loop. See, it is running. It is in finite time it is running. Right? Why so? Because, because at the time, here we have to put the condition and we are just putting i equal to 1 equal to is what? Only assignment. It is just assigning this 10 value to i. Assignment means this 10 is always true. Other than 0, that would always be true. Any other number would always be true. So, it condition would always be true. So, this would be an infinite loop. Equal to equal to if you want to check. Then you have to put this symbol. Equality you have to check. Then double equal to you have to put. Now, at this point of time, it will print only once. 10. Right. So, this thing you need to take care. So, this kind of condition. Other, other thing. Other than uh, condition you can put any expression here. Not like that you have to put only less than equal to or these kind of things. Any expression you can that's why I have at the starting only at the first syntax I have written here expression 1, expression 2, expression 3. Right? Rather than I plus plus, we can write I plus 1, I plus 2, I into 1, I into 2, these kind of things. Any expression you can write. Right? So, you can try out different different things with this for loop. Now, in the next video, we'll see some more properties of for loop or some more you know tricky things what you can write down, what you can do with for loop. How many in how many ways you can write down this for loop, right? With the help of some examples, you know, many examples, if uh, more precise, many examples. So now I'll see in the next video. Till then, bye. Take care.